Welcome to Westminster Presbyterian and our inclusive family of faith. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join me in the call to worship. We come in need of blessings. We come seeking closeness with God. Let us go to find our God. We come from the shadows of our lives, seeking light and hope. Hurry, let us go find the one we have heard about. We come to God seeking peace for our lives for our world. Come, let us go believing the world we have seen. Join me in the prayer of adoration. God of truth and understanding, source of all wisdom we seek, show us the wisdom of your word and teach us to abide in your way, ever growing in grace and favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
to confession. We like to think we are wise beyond our years. But when we look at our lives as God's people, we discover we still act too often like little children. Let us confess how we always want our way rather than following God's way. You set boundaries for us, holy God. We continue to cross over them into sin. Believing we are wiser than you, we are amazed that you would question our actions and lives. Offering us the warm sweater knitted from your love, we would rather slip our lives into the sleeves of bitterness and anger. Challenging us to carry one another's burden, we complain about how uncomfortable and heavy they are. Forgive us. Forgive us, searching God, and clothe us with your gifts of compassion, humility, patience, and hope. Then, dressed as your grateful people, we may go forth to live as sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We come to this font knowing that we belong to God. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. That together we are named and claimed in these waters as one family. Join me in our assurance of pardon. On this day, as on every day, God stands, arms wide open to embrace us, heart wide open to forgive us. Friends, this is the good news. God's glory is forever. God's grace will never end. We will rejoice in God's healing hope as long as we have breath. Thanks be to God, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia! Alleluia! Amen! Amen! And now let us share the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Join me as we pray for illumination. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength. To follow on the path you set before us through Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm reading this morning from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bonds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle. Creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heavens. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah 61, verses 10, and going on to 62 to verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and a garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will call righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings our glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third reading this morning continues Jesus' presentation in the temple after his birth. Listen to this from Luke 2, verses 36 through 40. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When you think of widows in the Bible, who comes to mind? The widow at Zarephath, who shares all that she has with Elijah? The widow who puts her two coins in for the offering at the temple? The widow of Nain, who sees her son resurrected at Jesus' hands? The widow in the parable, who annoys the unjust judge until she gets what is right? Or Naomi, whose strength and scheming brought her a happy ending with her first grandchild? It would be easy to disregard widows, especially in biblical times. After all, they were socially and politically powerless. In the Old Testament, God instructs the people again and again to care for orphans, widows, and foreigners, those who cannot provide for themselves, those on the edges of society. But Jesus brings those edges to join the center. In God's eyes, widows are not disposable, but instead are resourceful, generous, and faithful. In God's eyes, widows are essential parts of God's kingdom. An old widow comes to light in this morning's gospel reading. Following the more well-known Zechariah, Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, and Simeon the Devout, Anna is the sixth Jewish person involved in the birth story of Jesus. She is the only named female prophet in the New Testament and one of the few who have a tribal lineage mentioned. Once she catches a glimpse of the child Jesus, Something in her resonates, and she immediately spreads the good news that redemption was on its way. 
in her decades of service to God. She has kept hope alive that the Messiah will come, that her people will be saved. Despite the rough reception in Bethlehem, Anna is part of the hospitality that Jesus and his parents find in God's house. Oh, what's that? It's Anna herself, here to tell you her story. Listen carefully. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Anna. Let's see, it's been over 60 years now. Ever since my husband died, we had seven years together. But after he died, I began coming here to this temple. And this is where I've been ever since. My friends used to say to me, Anna, why don't you go with us to the market? Or, Anna, why don't you remarry a nice Jewish man? But by now, they know I will not. And my, now most of my friends have gone on to their lives without me, and I do get to see them here at, from time to time, which is nice, but they don't understand why I've chosen to spend my life praying and fasting here in the temple. I asked them once, what is out there that is greater than what is in here? They couldn't answer me. You see, I'm compelled by my heart. I'm seeking God's presence. I can do nothing else. Only his presence satisfies my heart and my soul. To think that the one who created the heavens and the earth spoke them into being is willing to let me speak to him and to hear from him and to ask of him in return. I am filled with wonderful things, things you can't find at the market. I am filled with joy. I'm filled with great peace and purpose. And when the Spirit of God comes upon me, everything in the world seems of no consequence, and all that remains is God himself. My friends feel that I'm missing out, but I, I know it's the other way around. I have stayed here so long because I'm compelled by the desperate needs of my people. Growing up, I lived with the oppression of an enemy the harshness of men who do not fear God. Oh, they have lots of gods, but it's not the one God. For all they do not, I tell you this, it's a time for our deliverance. I'm sure of it. Because one day, something happened. Right there. That makes me sure. I was walking from the temple, praying, as is my custom, and right there something happened. That's, but my heart compelled me to look again. Who is that with Simeon? I didn't recognize them, but something was happening, and I recognized it as a stirring of the Spirit of the Lord. As I moved closer to them, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and I knew, I knew, there in the arms of that young mother was the future of Israel. I heard some of what Simeon was saying, the rise and the fall of many in Israel, a sign to be spoken, many hearts to be judged. As Simeon finished speaking, I became overwhelmed with the emotion, and my lips gave way to the power of God, and I prophesied about the child and about our people. Wonderful words, power of God, powerful promises, mysterious things, scriptures came to my mind. Here is one that I remember. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout out or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. 
A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not stuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. Did the parents hear? Did they understand? Did I understand? No! Who can fully grasp the plans of the Almighty? But overcome by the impact of the revelation, I ran to those praying and said, Arise, lift up your heads. Your answer is here. But one man, silly woman, you do not even know what I was asking. How can my answer be here? I responded, it doesn't matter what the question. Your answer is here. There is a child. Pay attention to him. And I gathered some to show them the child. We went back, and the little family had gone. I frantically searched the crowd and trying to see where they went, and I wanted to run out of the temple to find them, but even if I did that, I would not be able to catch up with them. I'm just too old. Those who had come with me drifted away. I know that I belong here in the temple. So I have decided to be content with watch and listen for news of this child. Surely such an anointing will be, not be unnoticed. I'm sure to hear of this child. How will he show himself to our people? How will he throw off our enemies? How will he take the throne? And now I tell those who come here just what I have told you. God has sent a deliverer for us. He is here, and nothing will be the same. Not me, not my people, not the nations. Shalom. What a powerful testimony, Anna. Thank you so much for sharing your story. What did you hear in the story of Anna? Is it the story of your big mama, your auntie, your mother, yourself? Who do you know that is still hopefully seeking a sign of freedom and deliverance? What is the power of widows in our world today? Anna teaches us not to discount people's gifts at first sight. Maybe others only saw a silly old widowed woman, but God saw a prophet who still had things to say, a devoted woman of God who had found and fulfilled her life's calling. God saw a messenger of hope who had eyes to see what others might miss. Simeon was a devout old man, possibly a retired priest, and Anna was a prophet. Simeon held the baby Jesus and sang a song, and Anna saw something bigger than this small family. Simeon and Anna both knew God was at work. We see in both of them that God isn't done with them yet, just like God isn't done with us yet. We don't get to retire from following Jesus. Instead, those chapters change and flow, and the walk becomes more meaningful, and the faith community more important, and the truth spoken even wiser. Anna redefines who we think can be a prophet of God. It could be you, or you, or you, or me. It could be the widow searching for joy again, or an old faithful man getting to see his hopes fulfilled. It could be the cancer survivor who knows in a new way the depth of God's love and the power of community. It could be the immigrant mother working to better the community that has welcomed her in, loving her neighbors as herself. It could be the student protesting for better stewardship of God's creation. It could be three black women proclaiming black lives matter to God and to us. Friends, you too can have the devotion of Anna in your heart, and you too can proclaim the redemption of God's people. 
Can you commit to God day and night, praying and seeking a sign of deliverance? Can you find God's prophets in the faithful among us? Can you point others to the redemption that is right in front of them? Can you stay connected to those who have come before us, continuing to move their light and legacy forward? If we can, we just might catch a glimpse of a prophet, and we just might catch a glimpse of Jesus Christ himself. Thanks be to God for Anna, that she is part of our faces of faith. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer with the community of our saints. Eternal God, you sing a song of silence to our noisy hearts, inviting us to still our fidgeting souls and find our peace in your cupped hands which cradle us. We ask that you cradle those who are suffering and need your grace and peace. We ask that you cradle those caregivers who are tired in their body, mind, and soul, that they may know your strength and sustenance. Jesus Christ, wanderer of the kingdom, you are called to reveal God to us and do so in the tenderness of your touch, the gentleness of your words, the goodness of your heart, the peace of your shared yoke. Give our leaders and all those who share your yoke the wisdom and discernment to guide us through these days. Bless our educators and administrators as they find a way through the impossible. Spirit of rest, your childlike presence, open our eyes to the wonders of the world. As we hand you our anger, our hurt, our sin, May our burdens become our songs of joy. May we find our rest, our hope in you, God and community, holy and one, continuing to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now bring our tithes and offerings to God's table. Pause worship to offer your gifts online or through the mail.
us these gifts, God of wisdom, that we may be healing for those who suffer, the strength for those who long to endure, and the hope for those buffeted by the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Playground looks fantastic thanks to Walter O. Kids, we miss you and hope that one day you'll be filling these playgrounds again. And now as you go out into the world, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people, loving and serving by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen.